All right, guys, welcome to 6.4 Notes. This is on page 16 of the red packet. Uh, today's learning target is I can prove triangles are congruent using all of the different things we have known. So we have talked about, up until this point, we've talked about SSS, SAS, uh, HL, ASA, and AAS, all those different types. So there's five different ones we're going to be using. So this is kind of just like uh, a couple of reminders, and then for practice, you're just going to be doing a bunch of different examples of all the different types. Okay, so this is kind of just a review. So this first page is giving you some background information, some reasons that we can use uh, in our proofs. Okay, so look at this one. If point B is the midpoint, let's remind ourselves of what a midpoint means. A midpoint cuts a segment into two congruent segments, right? So for instance, in this segment right here, if B is the midpoint of AC, then that means AB is congruent to BC, as we can see with these tick marks. Okay, you should know that already. What about bisector? A bisector bisects a side. It cuts it in half. Okay, cuts in half. So you end up getting, you get two congruent sides. Okay, so for instance here, if CD is the bisector of AB, you end up with AE and EB being congruent to each other. Okay, then another one is, this is also a bisector, but this is bisecting an angle, okay? So you bisect an angle. Again, you cut it in half, you get two congruent angles. So a lot of you guys are probably thinking, Mr. Colston, I know what I'm doing here, and that's okay. But angle one and angle two would be congruent. So these are all just reminders. Then the last one, this word means perpendicular. Okay, so if AB is perpendicular to CD, that means that all of these angles are right angles. So one's a right angle, two, three, and four. Okay, so perpendicular uh, lines form right angles. Okay, so that's something kind of cool that you'll use a lot. All right, and then as a reminder, there's all of these different types. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail, but all of these were transversal angles. Okay, let's take a look at page 17. Page 17 should look like this. We're going to do a few proofs together. Uh, this is some things you should already be familiar with from the last couple lessons. But example one, we are given a couple different things, which makes sense, right? Because in our proof, we have two givens. All right, so our first given is going to be that AD is congruent to AB. Okay, why are we writing that as a given? Because it's given in our picture, or given in our problem. Nothing about our picture says that yet. DC is congruent to BC. Why are we writing that as a given? Because it says given. Okay, those are our first two givens. Uh, it's often helpful to put this on the picture though. So AD right here is going to be congruent to AB. We're going to put one tick mark on each of those. DC is going to be congruent to BC. So we could put two tick marks on those. Okay. So take a second. You might need to pause the video. Just make sure your picture looks like mine so we're all on the same page. What do we know so far? We know that this side is congruent to this side. How about we write that S on the side? Okay, we know a side. What else do we know? We know this side is congruent to this side. That's an S as well. So there's a few different directions we could go. What are our options? We have SSS. We could still do that one. Yeah, we could still do that one. What about SAS? Yeah, we could still do that one. 
these two use two different angles. We don't have any angles yet. We only we already have two sides. So I think we should do one of these two. So we either need to find a side that's also congruent or an angle. Okay. Anytime you have a picture where two triangles are squashed next to each other and they share a side, you're pretty much always going to use reflexive property, which looks like this. You've probably seen this already a few times. AC is going to be congruent to itself. So we could say AC is congruent to AC. This side is congruent. So this side of this small, the, ball, the bottom triangle is congruent to the side of the bigger triangle. They're the same side. Okay, that's the reflexive property. Now we know that our reason, our SSS, our final statement is always what we're trying to prove. So triangle ADC is congruent to triangle ABC. So that is a pretty simple SSS similarity. No angles. All right, what about or SSS congruence? Excuse me. Example two, page 17. Okay, what is given to us? Well, we know AC bisects DAB. That's a given. We know that DAC is congruent to BAC. Why do we know that? Hmm. I don't know why we know that yet. Okay. The DAC right here, it's telling us that it's congruent to BAC. Okay, why would we know that? Hmm. Well, if we know AC is bisecting DAB, AC is bisecting DAB, then we know that these two are congruent to each other. So it's kind of like the definition of a bisector. Okay, so that's an angle. We know an angle. Cool. This is also saying that angle one and angle two are congruent. Okay, well, why do we know that angle one and angle two are congruent? Huh, it was given to us. It was given to us. Okay, so that's another angle. Okay, so we're definitely not going to use SSS. We're, not, we're definitely not going to use SAS or HL. We're probably going to use one of these two, right? Either ASA or AAS. Okay, let's talk about which one we're going to use here. Well, remember what I said, uh, if you have two triangles squashed together, you're probably going to use reflexive. Well, here it is. AC is going to be congruent to AC. That's the reflexive property, right? So now we just got to figure out, okay, are we using ASA or AAS? That's what we got to ask ourselves. It does matter, the difference between those. So if you take a look at this first one, you see how S is in the middle of the two A's? Okay. In this one, the S has to be where the two angles collide. So if I look at this angle and this angle, and I draw my finger along the line to this angle, I am drawing my finger along the yellow line. Same if I did this with this triangle. I'm drawing my finger along the yellow line. So it's going to be ASA. If I would have done AAS, that would have been something like maybe this angle. Okay. If I would have said that like this angle and this angle were congruent to each other, that would have been an AAS or an AAS. But that's not what happened. We ended up with ASA, ASA, ASA. Okay. So there's a small difference there. If you're confused on that one, I would go back to the 6.3 notes and remind you, remind yourself of that. Okay. All right, 6.4, we're on page 18, last proof. So on this one, we're actually going to do the entire proof by ourselves, which is kind of intense. But we got this. There is a new proof reason code called All Right Angles Are Congruent. So let's go ahead and try and see if we can do this one. Remember, the first thing we always do is find our givens. Okay, so how many givens do we have? Well, we know that IF, this, remember this means perpendicular, perpendicular. So we know that IF is perpendicular to HG. 
Let me rewrite that a little bit so it looks a little better. IF is perpendicular to HG. Okay, that's a given. What's another given? Well, what about this one? FI bisects H angle HIG. All right, that's another given. Okay, do we know anything else about the picture? No, we don't have any other givens right here, and we don't have any tick marks or arc marks over here. So we're done with the givens. So now we just kind of kind of start figuring this out. Interesting. Well, we know that IF is perpendicular to HG. Interesting. How does that help us? What does that tell us about things? Well, if this is perpendicular to HG, let's take a look at our notes. If something's perpendicular, what do they do? They form right angles. Okay, so if IF is perpendicular to HG, this is going to be a right angle, this is going to be a right angle, right? So we can say our statement would be angle IFH and angle IFG are right angles, right? Why would we know that? Because what perpendicular literally means. Okay. All right, cool. Guys, we still don't know that anything's congruent yet. Hmm. Well, if those are both right angles, couldn't we just say that they're equal to each other? They're congruent? Angle IFH is congruent to angle IFG. Huh. Okay, so what, what would our reason be? Well, up here we got a new reason code called all right angles are congruent. All right angles are congruent. All right, so what do we know so far? Well, we have an A. That's cool. We finally have an A. Let's keep going. Anything else in our picture that you think you can kind of pick up on? Any angles that we see are congruent to each other? Like this one or anything there? Any angles? Mm, what about a side? Remember what I told you about if we ever have two triangles stuck together? We're almost always going to use reflexive. So we could say that IF is congruent to IF. That would be reflexive. Reflexive, right? Okay. Uh, we also know that we haven't really used this piece of information yet, right? If we know that FI bisects HIG, that means it cuts it in half. So we actually know these two angles are also congruent to each other. If FI cuts this angle in half, right, then that means these two would be congruent. So we could say that angle HIF is congruent to angle FIG. Why do we know that? It's the definition of a bisector. Bisector. So we have an A. All right. So it looks like we're good to go. We can for sure say that triangle HFI is congruent to triangle GFI. And why can we say that? Well, we have an A, an S, and an A. We got to figure out though, is it going to be AAS or ASA? Well, if you see here, the angle, if I move my finger all the way to the other angle, I'm moving along the yellow line, which is our side. So this would be angle, side, angle, right? Not AAS. Angle, side, angle, not AAS. So this would be ASA. Okay. So guys, I know that's a lot. But kind of what you're doing is, is you're just seeing what they give you and you're trying to figure out why that might be important. So like for instance, if you see here, IF is perpendicular to HG, that really helped us figure out three and helped us figure out four, right? Now what about the bisector thing? That really helped us figure out six, okay? 
So what they give you is they're, they're giving you things for a purpose, and you got to figure out what that purpose is. Okay? On your test, you won't have something that's extreme. So hang in there. You'll be okay. Uh, hope you guys have a great day. That is the rest of our notes. Um, now you're going to work on our practice for 6.4.